Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac. Today we're going to be getting this bike running. The wiring is a big mess. It's a 1978 Honda CB750. Where can I get the title for it? The guy gave me the wrong title, whatever. But we're going to get this thing running. It hasn't ran in five years. The brakes are locked up on the back. I don't, I don't think the engine's in neutral. I got to get the gauge clusters and put it back on. So we're going to we're going to start at the front and start getting some of those wires where they belong. Okay, so what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put this new gauge cluster on because the other one only has the speedometer side. So we're going to put this one on with the RPMs and the speed on here. Okay, we got the new gauge clusters on the new bracket and we're going to put it on the bike right now. Okay. So you got two holes right here, and then you got two holes on your frame. One right here, and one right here. So we're gonna put this up on here, like so. We're gonna make sure all the wires stay down. Set this up there, one in, the other one in. Okay, now gravity should hold that, but just be careful, because these gauge clusters are expensive to rebuy. Now we're gonna get a ratchet, and we're gonna tighten this down. Now that we have our odometer and our speedometer installed on the bike, now we're gonna put the ignition switch back on the bike. So that's gonna be kind of an intricate process. We're gonna have to feed it up to the bottom. So I'm gonna move you guys over. Okay, so now we're gonna install this and we're gonna put it up through the slot right here. Right like that. So now you get a key up here. Now we're gonna tighten it down. What I like to do before I tighten stuff down is I like to take it off the socket and I like to hand feed it up there that way I know it's not cross threading and it kind of lets you move it around a little bit better especially when you got all these tight wires up in here. So we're just going to get that one going and then we're going to put the other one in before we get it all the way tightened up. That way you can still move it around if you need to to the other hole. Okay so once it's all tightened up we're going to find our wire that goes into it, it's a little clip like this. We're gonna bring it over and plug it in. And then we're gonna plug in our gauge clusters. We should be good to go for that section of the wiring. Okay, now you guys are getting a good look at the gauge clusters and what all is behind them and stuff. So now it's the easy part, hopefully, is just connecting all the different wires together. So basically when you're trying to wire it all, just try and match the colors with the colors. As long as it's the factory wiring harness, you should just be able to match all the colors. Okay guys, so now we're gonna remove the seat. I'm just gonna continue moving this pin out by moving the seat up and down and back and forth. And we should get that pin out and you should be able to take your seat off. And we're gonna set the seat over here. So now we have access to our batteries and our wiring and our gas tank. Now I think I'm gonna move the gas tank off just so I can get to some of the wires and check under there and see how everything looks. Because this tank's obviously have to be cleaned out in the inside and the outside because we have some rust here and chipping of paint. I put some cardboard under my motorcycle just in case it leaked any oil because I didn't want to get it all over the floor. It's all personal choice at this point. Okay, now in order to remove the gas tank on this bike, there's a rubber part that holds it so it doesn't vibrate when it's like held onto the bike frame. So you're going to lift up and you're supposed to push forward and there's two pins to hold on to it. And you should be able to pull it back. Now obviously it's still plugged in. We got some gas in the tank. So you're obviously going to need to plug it with something when you pull it off. Now as I took a closer look at my gas tank, the tank's pretty rusted. So I'm either going to buy a new one of those, but I'm going to try the vinegar trick for like a week or so. I'm just going to rotate it in positions and see how much rust we can get out of it. So yeah, I'll let you guys know how that goes. And we're going to keep trying to wire the bike up just so we can get it to kick over and turn maybe some of the gauges on and stuff just to see if it all functions right. Okay guys, so the motor has the oil all in it. I got all that done. Now my wiring I connected, it's really easy. All you do is connect it with the actual colors. And then obviously I don't have my headlight on here so I didn't do that. And then I just grabbed a board, uh, battery off my four wheeler because I'm gonna change this into a cafe racer and I don't want a huge battery. So I'm gonna do that after. 
And my biggest problem was these um, fuses. They had the he, the guy that I previously bought this from had the wrong fuse in the bottom here, and I wasn't getting any power to my ignition switch. So I changed that out, and I was then I got power, and that was my whole problem. I was checking everything else on the bike, and it was just that little thing. So the moral of the story is just check your fuses first, and make sure you're getting power to the main power sources. Once you get that figured out, then you can start tackling other stuff. So that's what I've learned so far is check your fuses first, which I should have known because I've done stuff like this before. It's just I just wanted to, I thought there was a lot more problems with this. Okay guys, now that I have my oil filter back on the motor, my bolt back bolted under the uh, bottom of the motor where the oil drains, we're gonna fill the oil back in the tank. Mine's got the excess tank instead of in the motor, so I have to fill here. Okay guys, so we're gonna put our carburetors back on here since we cleaned them. If you guys wanna know how to clean them, I'll put a link in the description. There's a guy on YouTube that does it a lot better than I would do it. But basically you just need to clean them so they look shiny clean, because Obviously, then the gas can pump through it correctly. So we're gonna put our caps back on first. And these are kind of old. I'm gonna replace these, but it's just so I can um, tell if the motor's gonna run okay, and then I'm gonna tear this bike apart, obviously, and do what I want with it. So we're gonna put the old ones back on, and they have little numbers right on here which tell you this is cylinder two. So one, two, it's this cylinder. So we're gonna take off a rag here that's closing our cylinder um, so nothing gets in them, like debris. We're gonna put all these back on. Because when you put these on, you kind of want them to be straight. So I like look down this line here to see if they're all flush somewhat. Because if they're not flush, you're not gonna fit in the carburetors right. So you kind of, and you, if you move them, you know, they kind of like will fit on there a little bit better. So what I like to do is I like to take a look, good look down there and hopefully they're pretty straight. It's not exact, but it's, you could actually keep them loose and then move them as you're trying to push the carburetor on so then they would move. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you guys tune in next week. I'm tearing the rest of the bike apart. If you guys want to keep up, follow me on Instagram. Uh, rate and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, see you guys later.